Hey, it's Dave from the Camera Store. Today we're talking about the OM Systems 90mm 3.5 macro. When I first heard about this lens, I was very excited because it has some unique features that other macro lenses just don't have. Today we're back in the studio, we're going to take some great pictures of an old vintage camera here, talk about the build quality, how and when you're going to use a 90mm macro, and what I think about it, all things said and done. When you first get your hands on this lens, it is sizable for a Micro Four Thirds system. Usually when we think Micro Four Thirds, we think nice small little lenses. However, this is relatively big in the Micro Four Thirds world as far as primes go. I mean, if you compare it size by size to the 60 millimeter macro, it looks massive. However, when you really take a look at this lens compared to full frame lenses, for instance, the 180 macro from Canon is significantly bigger and heavier. This lens here, it's about 70 millimeters in diameter, about 136 millimeters in length with a 67 millimeter filter thread and comes in at only 453 grams. Although this lens is relatively large in the Micro Four Thirds world, it is easy to carry around and doesn't really weigh you down at all. As you take a look at this lens, there's the usual sort of switches we are getting accustomed to seeing on the side of lenses. We do start with an LFN button. This is a lens function button and you can assign it for a whole bunch of different applications. Uh, I have mine set for depth of field preview. So if I'm stopping my lens down, I can push this button and see what the look would be as it stopped down. But you can assign it to a whole bunch of different things. Now the top switch is where things get a little more interesting. We start seeing some of the secrets with this lens. We do have a focus limiting switch. So if I want to go from one to one magnification to infinity, I can set it that and the camera is going to try and focus that whole range. But if I know my subjects within half a meter, I can switch it between 0.25 meters, which is this minimum focusing distance at one to one to half a meter. This is great. It sort of eliminates that camera having to hunt so far to find focus. And the very last, which we see here with the red S on here is super macro. And this takes us up into that two to one macro range. That's where things get really exciting. At the end of the lens, we do see a big knurled ring here, and this is what we're going to use for manual focus. Now, at any time I want to go to manual focus, I can simply grab anywhere on the ring and pull it back, and it's called the snap back focus clutch. It allows me to manual focus. Now, it is a focus by wire system, so I'm not actually moving the elements back and forth myself. I'm telling the servo motor to move back and forth. There's a subtle delay there, but it's really well controlled. When you pull back the snap back focus clutch, it does reveal your distance gauge as well as a magnification for what you're shooting at. This is all very handy numbers. To understand and work with and it's so accessible and easy to work with. The other thing I like is that it's a very easy 90 degree throw to go from min to max on this lens. Now much like the OM1 camera I'm using today, the lens itself is very weather resistant. It does have an IP53 rating and I really applaud OM Systems for doing this. This is probably the one of the best weather sealed systems on the market. We decided to come indoors today to shoot. It's not the greatest weather outside and as much as I like shooting snowflakes, today I'd much rather be shooting indoors where I don't have to wear a big heavy jacket and gloves to capture anything out there. And it's a much more controlled environment in here. Now the stabilization on this lens is very effective. Olympus has some of the best stabilization out there and with this combination I'm easily able to get quarter second shot exposures and make it all work and look nice and sharp. However, I like shooting macro with a tripod and a focusing rail because it allows me to control all the elements a lot closer and my framing and you know do shot to shot consistency. This is of course a 90 millimeter lens. So to find the 35 millimeter equivalent of that, we have to double it with the two times conversion factor. So this is the equivalent of a 180 millimeter macro on a full frame camera. Now it is a 3.5 aperture lens, but we do need to double that as far as the depth of field goes. Now when it comes to shooting macro, depth of field is always problematic because it tends to be very shallow. So doubling the aperture, what the depth of field is gonna look like with the micro four thirds systems actually has an advantage when it comes to shooting macro. We tend to have a little bit more in focus than the same aperture aperture range in full frame. So why do we choose this kind of focal length when it comes to shooting macro? I mean, OM Systems already has a 60 millimeter macro and a 30 millimeter macro that do one to one reproduction. So why do we need a 90 millimeter macro lens? Well, it comes down to compression and also focal distance. With a 30 or 60 millimeter macro lens, I need to be much closer to the subject matter and I have a wider field of view, which takes in more of the scene. That might not be what I want for the aesthetic I'm looking for. A 180 millimeter equivalent macro like this 90 mil gives me the ability to pull back from the subject matter a lot more and really compress the background and really isolate my subject even more. It's a more pleasing look and gives me some other advantages as well when it comes to lighting because my lens isn't nearly as close to the subject matter as I would be with a 30 millimeter or a 60 millimeter macro. If you take a look at the shooting distance here, I'm shooting with a 60 millimeter macro and to frame the exact same shot with a 90 millimeter, I can step back significantly further and get the exact same framing but a nicer compression and more ability to light from the front. 
and also kind of important if you like shooting creepy crawly critters they don't like getting so close to they get really skittish so this allows me to be a little bit further back and get some great shots of them. This lens allows you to shoot one-to-one -one magnification so I can reproduce something life-size onto the sensor. That's pretty cool, but if that's not close enough, I can go to that super macro mode with a switch here and go to two-to-one macro. If you take a look at these two shots here, both shot one-to-one -one magnification and I can bring things much closer with a two-to-one magnification. Now, if that's not close enough for you, you can actually use a 1.4 teleconverter, which I have here, or a two-time teleconverter, which brings things in even closer. But you do give up a little bit of image quality. You gain a little bit of diffraction and certainly lose a little bit of sharpness when you're using them. I myself find that one-to-one -one magnification is pretty close. I mean, going two-to-one is on the rare occasion, but I like having it on this lens and finding myself finding little details that are tough to see even with a human eye, I can bring full screen with that two-to-one magnification. Let's talk about the image quality and what to expect from this lens when it comes to the optics. Now, if you crack this lens open, you're gonna find 18 different elements and 13 different groups. There's a bunch of ED elements and some really high resolution optics. They packed a lot into this lens and it really shows the image quality is fantastic out of this lens. Even at wide open, if I'm shooting at 3.5, if you look at the center sharpness of this shot, it's brilliant. If I go to the edges, we really don't lose anything at all. And even when we stop it down to f5.6, we don't really gain much, it's very marginal. Now what I'm finding is that I'm keeping this lens within that 3.5 to f8 range. Once I go beyond that, for instance, take a look at this shot at f22, we certainly see diffraction coming in and it's softening our images. The nice thing about macro lenses is that they generally have a very flat plane of focus. So when I'm documenting a piece of artwork or something like that, I can have a really nice, sharp, well-controlled image from edge to edge. However, it doesn't really show off the bokeh. Now, this lens does have a seven-bladed circular aperture that gives us very pleasing bokeh for shooting a subject that has some depth to it. If you take a look at these shots here, you'll see uh, the general range of this lens gives us a really nice bokeh. The, the looks, the highlights, the bokeh balls, so to speak, look fantastic. However, when we get Get much closer it's much more challenging for a lens to really take care of this and especially when we go to the extremes we start to see some onion rings start to show up now with this lens as we get significantly closer to our two to one macro range we really start seeing onion rings start to show up especially in the specular highlights if you don't have those it doesn't really show up nearly as much and it's very pleasing still so overall when it comes to using this lens i am pleased with the bokeh i'm getting out of it it's nice and creamy and i really like the image quality now, part of the reason we chose this vintage camera is the chrome bits on it. They provide a very good test subject to really see what kind of chromatic aberration this lens is capable of handling. And I'm really happy to report that this lens handles it fantastic. Even under a sort of a torture test here where we put extreme amounts of light on this lens to really try and make that difference from light to dark as extreme as possible, it's handling it very well with barely any color shift at all. Now what if you need more depth of field than f8 but you don't want to lose the image quality with diffraction? Here's where we talk about focus stacking and this is a very cool technique. Now the nice thing about the OM systems is that it's built into the camera itself. It's very simple to employ. Now if you take a look at this shot here, this is a shot at f8 and here's the exact same shot I've done but with focus stacking. And you can see the much broader depth of field I can achieve very simply and really easy. Now we're doing it on a tripod here today but the OM systems image stabilization is so effective under the right conditions I can do it handheld. It's a pretty impressive feature. Now we've literally been focusing on the macro aspect of this lens and it's primarily what it's built and designed for. However, However, a 90mm macro or a 180mm equivalent does make a very good lens for other applications. Now, when it comes to shooting portraits, for instance, head and shoulder shots, it's really quite nice. It is just a bit on the long side, so your subject matter is going to be a little further away than you might like, but it is capable of some really, really good results with some nice, great, creamy backgrounds. The other part is, if you're shooting landscape, for instance, it's great to be able to compress the background a lot more and bring those mountains closer or what have you. So it's not just a macro lens. Because the size and weight of this lens doesn't really weigh you down it fits into your camera bag and doesn't really cause much grief at all you're going to be more than willing to carry this lens around now what am i finding as i'm using this lens and my final thoughts on it i really like the image quality i'm getting out of this the resolution the quality i'm getting the sharpness is fantastic the ability to get nice creamy background and basically no chromatic aberration and plus the autofocus works great even in the macro mode i'm really enjoying the results i'm getting out of this lens and i can really highly recommend this lens if you are in the micro four third system already you do have the 30 or the 60 millimeter now they're significantly less expensive but this is the first pro series macro lens and it certainly shows you get the weather ceiling you get the best quality optics that om systems has to offer it's well worth the money and i would 
certainly recommend it. Now I of course want to know what you guys think of what I think is a very exciting offering from OM Systems. Is this a lens that's going to find its way into your bag anytime soon? Is it worth the price? Well, make sure you leave comments down below, follow us both on Instagram and please subscribe, hit the notification bell and we'll catch you again next time. Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching this episode on the OM Systems 90mm Macro. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're Canadian and you want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.